welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Hi friends, welcome back to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so happy to have you here and I am ecstatic to invite Sue Ludquist over to hang out with us and share this beautiful conversation. Sue, I would love for you to introduce yourself. Welcome to the show. So happy you're here. Thank you. Thank you, Josie. Thank you. And hello to everybody. I feel like the uh, dream of genie. I feel like I have to, after the show, I'm going to go work out with the dog. So I was like, oh, I should probably put clothes on and some makeup, but we're all moms, right? Shit. Regret. What's that? Josie, thank you so much. Welcome. Hi, everybody. I am Sue Lundquist. I have been in the personal development field and energy work because it's, it's all one to me. I can remember coaching a new mom, teaching a new mom. I like teaching and advocating versus coach at eight years old when she Mm -hmm. was in complete frantic and the baby was freaking out and she was a neighbor, a new neighbor mom. And I went over there, this eight-year-old girl goes and holds the baby. The baby's calm. The mom is not sure if she's going to lose her shiitake (laughs) because this eight-year-old's holding the baby and everything's calm now, right? (laughs) Wow. Yes. So I, and I, I've loved children and just human potential for God, from day one, animal advocacy, human advocacy, just the humanness of all of us. And then as I walked through my life, there was traumas and I use traumas as purely an adjective to describe. I don't, and I say that because I don't have any emotional charges to them anymore. Mm -hmm. I can can use an adjective of abuse, mental, physical, psychological, sexual, all the stuff. My soul decided it was going to, it was going to ride that way for a while. And then I, and then I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go from my crazy to my my clarity. (laughs) And I have to pick my own, my own panties up and bull by the horn and decide you know, when you go through the whole branding message and what is your why, who are you? And I wrote down my mission statement. I'm going to read this to you because I thought that this was so powerful. So my why, and also to never diminish myself or to have that for anybody else. Why so much pain? Why so much guilt? Why so much shame? Why so much trauma? And then I turned that around and I said, why don't I take the power back? Why don't I have the clarity, get the tools, find the power, whatever that looks like, find the self-love, find all that juiciness and take my power back Mm -hmm. instead of life doing to me, I'm going to be in it and be the being, right? So that's, yes, that's been my lifelong journey through traumas, through house remodels. If anybody's been through those, you know that, and three young kids, holy shiitake. Then within that, my dad who adopted me had Parkinson's and Louis diffuse bodies disease. Then I found my biological family, all of this at the same time, a little bit coming to the head, I'd say, right? (laughs) So there was, I thank God I had the tools that I did and, and even more so it just, it made me dive after having children. And I think all of us can understand this, figuring out what is love? How can I be that example of love? How can I stand in my shame, my guilt and my holy shit moments and still be the example of love and compassion and have that all be okay. Right. And what are my values? If I had trauma, if I had dogma and and staunch religion in my past, which all is great, but however, what that's not resonating with me anymore. So how do I move forward within my power? What does that even look like? I I mean, Josie, I was, I was, well, what does love look like? How am I going to explain that to my, I've got three grown daughters now. 
back then it was young girls and I, and going through my trauma and my stresses and all the stuff. And I was just like, shit, girl, you got to get off your pity pot. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, my pity pot's righteous. I had all this stuff happen to me. (laughs) I'm like, "Mm, yeah, no. So I, you know, you go through that and then you're like, all right, time to self-regulate, time to self-love, time to find those real time, real life self-regulating tools and having course correction and that sustainability of not only the 3D, and I'm using 3D language, your audience, like 3D humanness. We live life. We have kids. We have kids in naps and we still got to work. We have bills, right? And then we have this, this frequency of 5D. There's, there is an energy, whether you believe in G-O-D, you believe in purple chopsticks. You'll hear me say that all the time on my radio show, because it's a universal love for me. It's universal source, whatever that is to you there is an energy and a frequency that you align with and you tap into. And I bridge the two of those together, the practicality and the spirituality, that energetic frequency, because when you create that clarity, when you create clarity in your life, how you're showing up, what that looks like, it is a massive gas pedal. It is that rocket fuel for all of your desires, desires, and I, and my desires is, is I use words specifically instead of all of your wants, because that's a lower frequency kind of vibration. It's a want, like I'm lacking something. The desire on the other hand is, yeah, bring it. I kind of went on a segue. Is that okay? No, I love it all. <laughs> like love it all. I love, I'm just going to unpack it for you. What I heard, what okay. resonated, what lit me up. I love that you're speaking of taking your chaos, your crazy to clarity. That is huge, huge because we are so wrapped up in that chaos, in that mess. And sometimes you can't, you can't get out of that fog. It's, it's like right there, there's that fog. And you know, if you just step through that fog, you're going to like get to that other side, but yet you don't know how. So I love that that is your big message. And I love the message of taking your power back because a lot of people, I've been saying this a lot because that's what I feel like I've done. I'm like, I'm awake, I'm alive. Like I, it took a minute to get here to feel yeah. the safety. And I was scared. There was a fear. Oh yeah. In a hot second, it's change in a hot freaking second. And I want to go back to what you were just saying. My analogy is crossing the bridge. Mm. Our life is an initiation, right? An initiation, not with any kind of negative connotation, but crossing the bridge of your initiation. It could be this conversation Mm. that I hear something and I'm going to be initiated into my own power again. And your, your language of having that fog walking through that fear. And I'd also like to say there is a, and there's science backing all of this up too, because I love that, that nerdy aspect about it too. Although it's not, it's not me to determine or prove anything, but where I'm going with this is the science and, and you have a biological effect and effect that's happening when you are stuck in the drama, when you are stuck in that fear, it's your nervous system. There's chemicals in there going, oh no. We're going to keep you right here because this is what we know and it's safe and you're firing your adrenals are firing these chemicals, not the real healthy ones. They were healthy when you were running from dinosaurs back in the day. Now it's in-laws. Now it's bosses or whatever. And you've got to be able to stand in that and self-regulate it. If in fact, and this is a big thing for me, these are my anchor words. I say, is this, and it's a superpower tip that I talk and teach about when you're in the moment of relating or engaging, is this authentic and genuine to me? It just goes thunk. authentic and genuine to me. Is this true? You're having an anxiety attack. Somebody's attacking you. You know, if it's an anxiety attack or anxiousness or something that's going on in here, is it really true? Or is it that nervous system with all those chemicals coming back rushing to make you want to just scream, yell, cry, fix your pants, run, do whatever you want to do, metaphorically speaking, or literally, because it is, it's your nervous system and all those energies and and the chemicals. And then your body, your BODY becomes addicted to those releases. And so when you go in to crossing the bridge, the crossing the fog, going through that, you're like, wait a minute, this doesn't feel right. 
Well, it doesn't feel right because your body's addicted to the old stuff, the old fear. So guess what? Step through that, my brothers and my sisters. Go through it. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. I, yeah. Are yes. you feeling that? Yes. Your body. So powerful. Yes. Your body is like, that doesn't feel familiar. That does. We're not yes. used to this yet. We're not used like what? No, we're used to feeling comfortable. Like we're here, we're just chilling. We're fine. We're used to this. It sucks. We're used to the suck. Uh, you, you make the choice. Ask the question. Ask the question. Is it true? No, it's not true. Okay. How do I cross the bridge? You walk through it. You lean into it. And there was, I was talking to, I was on an interview last week and you hear the language, Josie, about dropping the bags of fear, dropping the bags of the past, dropping the stuff, right? Mm. Getting rid of the stuff. And I've used that analogy because it was really tactile for me. And she gave me a really beautiful way to kind of paradigm shift that and to use that energy more, whether it's of prayer or of enlightenment. And she said, instead of dropping the bag, how about you release it and transmute it mm. into the frequencies that be and use it to your benefit? How juicy is that? Right? <laughs> We're both like, yeah. 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 That feels so much more light. It just right? feels lighter. Drop oh, a heavy shit, bag. I a heavy yeah. bag back there. Ugh, that's just the... Yeah, no, I'm going to transmute the shit, the fear, the guilt, the shame, all of us mommy guilts and all that. You know what? Let's transmute that to love. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I know my listeners like how, how, because we always have to know the how we're the human, the be that's like, how, tell how, me how, right? That is it. I would, I've been on the proverbial search for years and it is the real time, real life, self-regulating mm -hmm. and new habits for your life. Do you want to win in life? Ask yourself, do you want to win in life? Not from a egoic perspective, that win in life of love for myself, that win of life of speaking from compassion and kindness and nurture and with boundaries, saying a respectful no with taking care of yourself and also not diminishing or shaming or making the other person feel wrong. And if you can practice and show up that way, it is then not your responsibility to take on whatever they're responding to, because you know, in your heart of hearts, that's how you showed up. Yes. Oh my gosh. This conversation. I just had this conversation. With Isn't my this so juicy? Yes. With my sister-in-law yesterday. And she was talking about how like she is so triggered and she gets triggered. And I was trying to explain to her, like, it's not, it's not the other person's problem. The other person doesn't have the power. And I just kept telling her stories and trying to make it make sense for her, but I don't think she was ready to hear it. And I would love for you to, to say it in your way that she can hear <laughs> That's the addiction. Message. That's it right there. That is the addiction. Her body is addicted to the drama. And that I say that with complete love and compassion because mm -hmm. oh, I've yeah. been there and yeah. she had talky. I'm still going through. I'm walking the talk. I am so walking the talk because people can't grasp. And when you say, oh yeah, I had an ex. I was married for 22 years and raised three beautiful children. And he would say, stop it. You're triggering me. Mm -hmm. And I would be, mm, you take that responsibility and accountability for yourself because I have no idea what's boiling inside of your nervous system and from your past. I have no clue. And I'll say something like, what do you mean I'm triggering you? Well, you know how to manipulate and play a game. He wouldn't say that word, but it was, it was as though he was justifying or making the excuse that said, well, you, oh, I know what he would say. He said, oh, well, you know how to push my buttons. Like, yeah, no, I don't know what those buttons are on the inside. I don't have a clue. Now, granted, have I slipped from grace and I didn't show up in compassion and love because guess who was triggered? <laughs> so you, that your humanness, you have to set the stage. You, you, it, there is a practice. So you hear when shiitake hits the fan, right? You, okay. Life and, and life is hitting the fan. So prior to that, it is so vitally important for you to have a practice already in place because when that shiitake hits the fan, if there's biological, there's chemical, there's all kinds of things happening. I would say lean into that. And if you, in that moment, again, if you're being triggered, 
the number one freest gift, freest tool in the now that I can give is deep breath. Mm -hmm. First, it's the awareness. So all that I teach and advocate for, I've got a three-step process and it's awareness, clarity, and transformation. Anything and everything that you start with has to be with awareness. Mm -hmm. We can be triggered and stuck in denial. We can be angry and stuck in that pity and that shame. Been there, done that, right? Then you make the choice. You get, you, you have the awareness. Mm -hmm. Then you get the clarity. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. And then the education starts coming around. You get people like myself, like you that kind of pop into your life, or you hear a song that reminds you of compassion or love or something that was beautiful in your life or a conversation, a book that pops into your awareness because the energies that be have your back brothers and sisters. They do. And when you start that evolution, you're starting a beautiful chain reaction mm -hmm. of awareness and clarity. So we do awareness, we get clear, clear on clarity and who we are, how we're showing up in the world. That's the education part. Then we go into the transformation, the integration of the new tools, how they align with me, how they align with my language, my life, my boundaries, my children that you've got, because especially kids are the great parameter for the <laughs> BS meter. So if you're standing there and you're not standing in your truth, the kids are going to go, <laughs> right, I'm going to keep pushing this button and keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And it's the great analogy for life itself too, because people also recognize if you're not standing in alignment, they're like, mm, there's a BS meter in there somewhere. So that's the three phases of transformation in my experience and what I created. And I get clever on analogies because I like spins on words. ACT, act now in your life mm. because it's a forward movement, not of complacency. So it is, it's awareness, clarity, it's the education, your transformation starts integrating into your life with new boundaries, new language, self-regulating tools, all that beautiful stuff. Yes. Juicy. And yes. it's intimacy on a whole new level. Mm -hmm. Intimacy I use as a broad umbrella. We could, we could have an intimacy of relating and it's conversation, whatever that dynamic in that relationship is. Mm -hmm. We can have intimacy in an intimate relationship. Again, whatever that intimacy and that dynamic is and getting your needs met, your needs met. And you hear, and I don't know if you've, you've heard this yourself with your clients, why am I so exhausted? Why? Where's my energy? Right. And I know I was doing the same thing. Well, are you giving your energy out mm -hmm. and saying yeses to all the people that you should be saying the no's to, yeah. or you've got triggers and turmoils in your body that's spinning the energy and spinning the adrenals because your body's addicted to the chemicals. I'm so sorry, my loves. I'm so sorry. Yeah. So it, it benefits you. And you hear about, you know, the people coming up with diseases in their bodies because the energies and the past emotions are trapped in there. I've witnessed it firsthand. So really taking the bull by the horns, picking your big panties up, going, all right, I'm taking my power back. Yes. I want more energy. It's like, so, I keep saying that it's the ease, the energy and the excitement. It all, that is what comes. Oh. And, and, and we get so humanized and thinking, you know, I go back to that easy button. Do you, <laughs> you remember the easy button? It's right. so true. It's so true. You're like, oh, shiitake. That was easy. Does that mean it was really real? Yes. Yes. Can yes. I trust that? Yes. yes. And you know what? If you get clear and when you get clear on your intended outcome, you have this momentum that's building and things, people, songs, environments, synchronicities will start popping into your awareness you're going to learn regardless if you loop in or loop out, it doesn't matter. You're in a learning process. And I would encourage, I encourage myself, the people I teach your audience. I, I actually, this is super juicy. I coined this a few years ago. It's having the CCs in life, compassionate curiosity. So even when you're talking and getting triggered, deep breaths, like literally five to 10, take some time. And just say, you know what? Mama needs a timeout. Can you hold? Just please hold. Please hold. Just take your breath. I mean, if the Navy SEALs can do it, we can do it. And it's free. Did you hear me? There's no discount code. It is free. Take the bull by the horns and start breathing. Literally breathing. breathing. Yes. And having compassionate curiosity. That compassion 
raises to the heart vibration. It gets you back in that heart and that curiosity. Ooh, that curiosity, like a kid takes the sting out of whatever is happening. Right. Yes. So if you combine, those are the biggest tools I can give you. If you guys didn't hear anything, but I gave you lots <laughs> and my love, compassionate curiosity, really. And that breath work, those are two huge tools I can offer you right here, right now that will be sustainable. And not only for you, your generations to come. Mm -hmm. So if you were in a position, cause I know when I was starting my self-love and acceptance journey, I'm like, well, if I can't do it for myself, I'm doing it for my kids. Mm -hmm. So find that willpower somehow, somewhere, right? Moms and dads, right? It's so powerful and use, use that momentum and that love for your children, even though it's an external thing, but although we've birthed them and I I'm coming from adoption too, I say birth and I say, you have a child, whatever that looks like to you. If you're two men, two women, you adopted, you didn't adopt, whatever. You're still a parent. I love this conversation. I get so excited. Thank you. <laughs> I, yes, to all of it. Everything you're saying is resonating and touching my heart because it's the truth is we have the power and we say it, we hear it. And a lot of us are saying to ourselves like, but do I really? And you're saying, breathe, take a breath, get present with yourself and take your power back. Yeah. And in that presence with yourself, and I know this to be true, and Josie, you can talk about this or have this conversation too, getting clear or, or getting in the present moment with myself can be really freaking scary, mm -hmm. can be really a lot of fear, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, whatever that is. But you know what? A lot of that shame and that guilt, it's from the past. Mm -hmm. It ain't in your now, yes. but your now is giving you a time to release it and transmute it, mm -hmm. give it to the white light, give it to the energies that be to, to make it rain, to make it yes. sunny, to make it whatever, yep. get it out of your body. Put it and inside it's a got balloon to and watch it go. That's yes. what the canvas just like came into my mind. It's like, put it inside of a balloon and just like watch that balloon go away. <laughs> yes. God. And then replace it. You've got to have some kind of something else that's a higher vibration uh, above the line mentality thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got your thinking and you've got your heart. And I'm, I'm combining the two of them, the heart and energy and, and our practicality, right? You have to show up in love and trust and, and replace that. Yes. And it is a habituation, you guys. It's going to keep coming back mm -hmm. until, and I, you know, what was so powerful for me, for me, Josie, is I have been doing practicing and researching the work of a gentleman. He's a New York best time seller. He's a trained doctor of chiropractic. He's deep rooted in neuroscience. His name is Dr. Joe Dispenza. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't heard from him, please do. I've been with him. I've interviewed him. I was actually blessed enough to be a team leader and activity leader and travel with him for three years and, and witness all these incredible people. But where I'm going with this, because he and his process and his education helped me heal and I use a lot of that meditation and breath work in, in what I do. And what was so important to me, because I'm tactile and our, our brains and our humanness wants to see the result. I didn't have a lump on my arm. You know, I didn't have any kind of skin paralysis or disease, which I have seen people heal in a hot second, just putting that pin in there. It's neuroscience and it's proven. When you have a habit, you have a neural pathway that's literally firing, mm -hmm. firing and wiring together. When you start changing that habit, it changes to a different neural pathway. And so I put that in my head and my heart saying, come on, girl, it's changing. It, it's changing. And then it becomes your norm. And hear me out with this. After it starts to change, becoming your norm, you are creating new experiences within your environment, which then gives you self-confidence and self-love. It's that attaboy kind of thing. You're doing it, girl, you're doing it. And it creates that new self-trust, right? First, you got to have the awareness, then the clarity and the education, and then you got to integrate with the transformation, right? Yes. And I love that we're talking a little bit about brain science because <sighs> it's your human, your brain needs to make it make sense. <laughs> yes, it does. And I would encourage, it so does. I would encourage people to not be stuck in their brain because I, I've, and I, you know, I, I talk to men, women across the board, 
And they're like, wow, I'm so analytical. And I'm like, yeah, okay, let's do some breath work. Let's get into here. No, 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 that's scary. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. And I don't know about you, Josie, but if I do not feel safe, mm -hmm. and this is safe word across the board, intimacy on a whole new level, mm -hmm. all of the adjectives that go under that umbrella, brothers and sisters, all of them. If you do not feel safe, you're not going to open up. You're not going to have the orgasm of the world, the brain orgasm, the heart orgasm. And there is such a thing as a heart orgasm. It is this massive opening like you have never, ever experienced in your life. It is so delicious. It's out of this world. <laughs> it is out of this world. It is. So ask yourself, do I want to experience that love? And when you experience it, then you create that neural pathway. And then, you know, you have something to go back on and go, oh, I remember that feeling. That was so much love and juiciness. I want more of that. Yes. And then you keep having experiences, 3D, that resonate with that experience. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. And that, I didn't even know how to put words to it the first time it ever happened. It was, oh. just, it was just so magnificent that I was just like, there has to be love like this out there for all of us to tap into at any given time. It is here. It is here. It is here. It's all, I mean, it's right here. It's like literally it's all right here. It's right. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me about that. But when did you have that heart opening? I mean, oh talk my to gosh. Me about that. Yes. So I'm going to go grab him actually. He's oh, the, is he awake? Okay. Yeah, he's, he's the, he's the reason. Yes. <laughs> Hi, baby. Oh, you're so oh, that's it. Hi. <laughs> oh, George. Yep. yep. This Hi. is it. This is how it happened. I, yeah, my heart exploded a thousand million all over the place. I had gave birth to this kid. <laughs> And I was like, this love that I have inside of me, if there is this much love for this child who I just met, like there has to be this much love out there for me. And there has to be, it has to be. So I went on this search and I'm every day, like this love is just so immense. It's so big and he feels it. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's so powerful. And to be able to tap into that. And again, audience, everybody who's listening, I've walked the talk. I know what it doesn't look like as well. Mm -hmm. And that's why I am here in the stage and the rink that I am in. Hi, baby. Oh, beautiful, mama. Beautiful. Yes. Oh. I love that we could be that because it's, you have to know that it's out there in order for you to even know it's obtainable. Yeah. So you that have is to have a neural message. pathway. Yeah. Yes, that is what that is it. Yes. Yes. That is, that is so, and first it's the awareness. Yes. Because we all know what we don't want. We're real good at that. Yes, we are. We are so good at that. And we're really good at allowing those triggers of what we don't want to come in, aren't we? Because we're having the chemical reactions. We're having the neurological and the body functions that are saying, stay there. Cause that's what feels right. No, my loves cross the bridge. Yes. Oh my gosh. This conversation lights me up, fires me. I kept getting tingles and oh, I feel like this message is so needed right now, right now. It is so needed and it, the possibilities are endless. If you just decide that is what's on my heart to say. Like if you just decide we need a big fat permission slip that says permission, 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 mm -hmm. permission. You have in all of your own right, your God given, your purple chopstick given, whatever that is to you that's authentic and genuine to you, that little angel right there, whatever that is to you, have the permission. You don't have to be living in your past anymore. You don't. Well, there's so many people, you and there's this uh, language called refractory period. And that refractory period, so many people still live in that. Oh, well, that happened to me eight years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm still living in that refractory period. So with the self-regulating, the new habits, the new, the new experiences, the new love, the new trust that, that the self-regulating and the new habits create, shorten that refractory period because you become more aware that you don't want to be in that space yes. anymore. 
right? That space defined as fear, shame, triggers, guilt, angry. And if I could also ask the audience, you know what you don't want. So look, it's, it's positive and ask yourself, okay, if I'm standing in fear, do I want love? Yes. You define what that love is. Love is a freedom. It's just this, ah, oh, it's this sense of release and freedom, right? Because when we're in that turmoil, we don't even know what that feels like. So ask yourself what that looks like. And you know what else I also did, Josie? When I was starting this journey, I was like, well, what does that authentic and genuine, what does that really mean to me? So what I did is I went on YouTube and the two things that I combined were puppies and babies laughing. Come on, come on. You cannot tell me that raises your frequency and that brings out that love juju right? Perfect. Yeah. Right. So that started. And I would, I would, as soon as the stuff would come in and be like, "Mm -mm, I'm going to my, I'm going to my juju. Mm -hmm. I'm going to my babies and my puppies. And then I keep practicing. It was my practice. And then I would have new experiences and then I would have new trust and then I can build and integrate all that. Right. Yes. And it just takes showing up for yourself. Just keep showing up for yourself. Yes. Yes. You have to. You have to. And you know, something else that freaked me out too, with the journey was, well, if I change what happens to the people around me? Yes. Big one. Mm -hmm. Huge. You know what? If they're meant to be around you, they're going to be, if you were the giver and they were the taker and you still want to have them in your life, you're going to have to sit down and have a really heart to heart, compassionate, curious conversation. First, you got to get clear on what that looks like and how you're going to communicate that. Because there's going to be, wait a minute, you're changing the rules on us. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you've really got to get clear on what that looks like and how you're going to show up in that conversation and that relationship. So you can help navigate and and kind of be in the wheelhouse of that. You may not have all the answers, but it's really going to be important that you have that practice in place. Yes. Right. Absolutely. And, And those that do go away, you know what? They were there to teach you what you didn't want. Yeah. Bless them. Or lessons. Right. Less than let go. Bless them and let them go. <sighs> Thank you. And it's the it's the gratitude that you it's so deep, yeah. It's deep gratitude. Thank you for teaching me shame. Mm-hmm. Thank you for teaching me patience. Thank you for teaching me to speak up for myself, yeah. my needs. Yep. Thank you for setting me on this journey that I didn't even know. I didn't know. Thank you for being the mirror. Let yes. me see what I, what I had on my face. Like, thank you. <laughs> the best gift you can give somebody is that holding space and being that mirror, mm-hmm. the, not, not answering the questions, not trying to figure it out. Just hold the space, love on them. And then at that point you can determine, are you looking for tools? Are you, are, are you wanting feedback? I may not be the right person, but let's find somebody yes. for you. Right. Exactly. Don't fake it. Mm-hmm. Do not fake it. Is so true. And I want to be, I want to raise my hand. I feel called to say that as you're changing, invite others to change with you. Cause that is how I've been able to keep my marriage intact. Cause it was night and day, <laughs> what wow. night and day. I went from people pleasing, making sure he's all happy to like, Oh, I'm over here too. I need love too. I help. <laughs> yeah. What help? What? what? Yes. Oh, girl. When I started evolving out of that uh, recovering people pleaser, Mm -hmm. raising three kids, I've got 22, 21 and 19. Mm -hmm. And there was a mark in, in the marriage where it became very apparent about the whole people pleasing Mm -hmm. and doing all of that. And I started changing and evolving and he didn't like it. I couldn't be who I am. Right. He didn't like it. (laughs) He was like, what is happening? What is happening? You're changing the rules. Wait, 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 wait. Every day you're changing. You're like a whole new woman every day. Yes. Come join me. This is fun. This feels good. Yes. You want to feel this good too? Let's do this together. Like, and what a blessing there. that he wants to. Oh yeah. He, became, he desires. I celebrate you. him and I love him to pieces. He is a year sober from <sighs> drinking alcohol. We've been married now for four together for 12 and for 11 years of our marriage, alcohol, alcohol. And I kept saying like, when that changes, my life will change. No, I had to like love myself. I had to have that boundary of like, this is what is, this is what I need. Yeah. 
and it was like, meet me here. I love you. Oh, meet me here. here. Oh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> mm. Meet me here. Yeah. I love it. I am working through all of that. You know, we, your podcast and you talk about no more shame. What do you say? No mom guilt and stop second guessing. Mm -hmm. Right. And working through, because I'm taking the bull by the horns. I know. Mm -hmm. And, and in, in a partnership, whatever that looks like to you, you take a hundred percent accountability and responsibility, a hundred percent responsibility and accountability. It's not this 50, 50. And then we come together. You are hundred percent in and you're hundred percent in and you come in. Right. And then you meet mm -hmm. and you do this together. And that was a process for me to say, he just doesn't have the capacity and I can't keep rowing the boat by myself. I'm drowning and I have three kids and I'm diminishing myself because I, I can't keep making him feel wrong because he's not meeting my expectations. And I say expectations and where I'm at in my life and showing up to where I want to be and also putting up boundaries, not showing up from an egotistical standpoint, just saying, Hey, I'm changing. This just does, this isn't aligning with me anymore. It's not. Mm -hmm. And so shedding all of the old beliefs and the old patterns that I fully brought on myself, y'all mean could be going, what do you mean you brought that on yourself? It's true. If you live in, if you have the belief that I do, it's, it's a little bit Buddha. It's a little bit, I don't know. It's, it's just the Sueisms of life. All of that, taking accountability and responsibility of yourself and knowing that you have the permission slip, like we were talking about, you have the yes. Yes. You really have the yes in your life. You have to choose. You have to choose. And it's a big initiation. I am not sugarcoating it. I am not. And there are simple, easy, practical, self-regulating mindset habituation tools that you can do to start getting on that practice. And I loaded you up with it over these yes. last few minutes. I want to make sure I'm watching our time. So yeah. <laughs> it's so true. I love what you're speaking on that we have the tools. And when we're in a partnership, I love that you're speaking to like what was on my heart when you were speaking that was we have to almost go to the person and say, I allowed you <laughs> to treat me this way. I said it was okay for this long. We've been together 12 years and for 11 years. I said, okay. I'll deal, I'll deal, yeah. I'll deal, I'll deal. But now I'm saying I cannot deal and I'm okay to say that. Yes, that is so powerful. You teach people how to treat you. If you want your life to change, let me repeat that. You teach people how to treat you. You do. And if you're diminishing for whatever reason, diminish is a big adjective with all kinds of things underneath it. Look at that, have that awareness. And say if that's really authentic and genuine to you. And then the courage, the teachers, yourself, me, whatever that is in your life to, to get that education and that accountability partner or, or people around you that will not enable you. That's important. Hold your hand. Hold your hold hand, hold your space. That bridge. And, yeah, <laughs> cross that bridge, right? Yeah, it's so important. It is so important. I love hearing that you, have, you guys have been together so long and he's meeting you right there. I love I, that. I am pouring so much love. Like I feel the love for myself, for my son that I can't help, but I keep saying pour from the overflow because I'm so lit up. I'm so fired up and I just want everybody to feel this way. Yes. Yes. And some of them will be like, hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. But be, so you know why they're doing it. that is because we're showing them what they really want mm -hmm. and they don't like that. Yeah. I'm not ready. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not ready to be happy. I like where I'm at right now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Better. Oh my gosh. Oh right? my gosh. Yes. yes. You're thinking of people and, and situations, <laughs> even yourself. Nope. I'm not ready. And you can't, you can't shove this down anybody's no. throat. You can't, you can just keep showing up as that loving example. And just, it can, and it's the, uh, when Harry met Sally, little thing. I want what she's having. No. <laughs> yes. 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 It's the heart orgasm. It's the brain orgasm. It's the body orgasm. Mm -hmm. And it is a metaphor, but it's also really practical guys, mm -hmm. guys and gals. Yeah. It's yes. so is. And if you want to have your needs met, if you want to have energy, if you want to have compassion, uh, wanting and desiring all that in your life. I'm going to take want out because I rather use the word desire. desire. If you desire that type of intimacy, 
like you have created over these last few years with your, your hubby and your son, Mm -hmm. you've created a whole new intimacy Mm -hmm. on a whole new level, whole new level, night and day, night and day. You're happy girl, aren't you? (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't be happier. (laughs) And I'm not saying you don't have your kitchen floor moments. We do. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I just had one last week. I, yeah, I, we're good. Mm-hmm. However, it's the refractory period I was telling you about earlier. You just don't stay in it. You now have the, call it the bounce back. The bounce the back. Bounce back. Yeah. bounce back. <laughs> bounce back, babe. Yes. yes. Bounce back game goes up. It's a quick get it. And it's not bypassing. It's like, I feel it. Yuck. I'm here. What is I'm this teaching? In. What am I learning? I'm going. <laughs> And yeah. then you bounce back. Yeah. And that's important that you said that too, because so many people and there's a, a media push about, oh, just think positive. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's it, it's not about that. You it, that's denial. That's avoidance. Yes. It really is. You can apply those tools if they're really authentic and genuine, and you can integrate the inspiration and the positiveness to you if you're in that space. Mm-hmm. However, you're you've got a BS meter in you. It ain't gonna, it's not gonna align. It's just not going to. And then you're gonna get frustrated. And then you're gonna go down the, the rabbit hole of well, that didn't work. And then you're gonna go into shame and guilt and all that other stuff we do it all the time, right? Yes. 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 Oh you my have gosh. To. Yes. So much goodness in this conversation. Good. So much goodness about loving up on yourself, taking your power back setting that intention, being, being the best you, honestly, (laughs) that you could ever want to be is what is like, that's what's landing with me is you have that power to be the best you and you get to be you. (laughs) You do. And now you have the tools. Yes. So when you're ready, the teacher will appear. Yes. It it is. Mic drop. That's it. Boom. Done sister. (laughs) High five. (laughs) Every time, every time, oh. Sue, I would love for our listeners to support you, to work with you, to get into your world and your space, because this is goodness. This is goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So go to claritywithsue.com. Pretty simple. Claritywithsue.com. I have an international radio show. I broadcast live from the Pacific Northwest. I've got clients and customers and I teach. I'm not a coach. This is important to differentiate. I'm a teacher and an advocate. So I teach people how to show up for themselves. It's important that you know that there's going to be accountability and responsibility on how that is for you. I do in person. I do Zoom. I like the one to many's because that creates that environment of accountability and kind of your buddy, right? And, and when I teach, it's very interactive. And now that the world is opening up, I'm going to start traveling again and coming to local areas, international and local across the United States. So if that's something that sounds good to you, or if you want me on your conversation or other radio shows, I'd love to talk to you. Just go to claritywithsue.com. You can email me at sue at claritywithsue.com. Yeah. And uh, the C2C program, the craziness to clarity. You can go to claritywithsue.com and just hit the link. And did you get a special link? Yes. for your show notes. Okay. So you just post that and you take care of it from your side. Perfect. We're good to go. Yeah. Wonderful. And are you on social as well? For oh gosh. Social? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Social media. I, if you go to my website, clarity with Sue.com, I, you just hit the one button and go, you can go to Facebook. I think that's still under my radio show, the gratitude cafe. I uh, may be clarity with Sue, but I'm given too much information. So if you just go to clarity with Sue.com, you just get it all. Yes. You get it all. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep rambling, but that's just going to get confusing. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, Sue, thank you for your heart. Thank you for your energy. Like you light me up. We're lit Yay! up over here. Before you jump off, I would love for you to speak. What is on your heart after having this conversation? What is on your heart that feels like it needs to be shared? The biggest thing that comes to me because this work and being of service to provide real life practical tools and to provide the hope and the permission slip. Mm -hmm. Babe, you don't have to stay where you're at. You really don't. And to have walked my talk, lived what I've lived, to be able to then turn it around to be of service. That is what's on my heart. When I'm able to do this and provide a service 
and provide hope and vitality and love. Drop that mic. Done. Done. Right? That lights me up. It lights me up. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. thankful. So thankful. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're gonna do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are on all podcasts places you listen. We are also on YouTube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. (laughs) And we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.